there, welcome to WSJ Off Duty. I'm Wendy Bounds. It is a big weekend for sports fans. We have the French Open. We have a little boxing for you Mets Yankees fans. We've got a Subway Series, but right now all eyes are on the Belmont Stakes. On Friday, hopes for the first Triple Crown winner since 1978 were dashed when I'll Have Another was scratched from the race. His trainer, Doug O'Neill, blamed a swollen tendon. Here at the Belmont, though, the show still goes on, and we have an all-access pass as everyone gears up for the 144th running of this race known as the Test of the Champion. We'll take you inside the announcer's booth to learn the secrets of legendary race caller Tom Durkin, and we'll bring you insider betting tips from an expert handicapper. But first, let's find out why this famous retired jockey used to wear his underwear inside out. <laughs> he lost interest. In every sport, the athletes are always looking for a leg up on the competition. They have superstitions, they have rituals, they have habits. Jockeys in particular do, and we're right here with retired jockey Richard Migliori, otherwise known as the MIG to most of us. You have your own superstitions and you're going to tell us about them, but we're right here before the Belmont Stakes. What are jockeys feeling right now? Those that are going to be riding in the, in the race, you know, what's going through them a couple of days before the race? Well, of course, they're thinking about the race already, but Fortunately, they have other horses to ride and kind of occupy their time. You don't want to overthink it or get tight and, and, and then start um, maybe making mistakes in your mind. You want to be positive. You want to be in your flow. And we've got great jockeys that are riding in the Belmont, so I think these guys will be okay. More, almost 4,500 races under your belt. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, well, it, was, it, was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a good time. You have some habits uh, that you are well ingrained. Now, let's start with some of the, the ones, uh, what you wear. I mean, you were very particular about how you got dressed. Yeah, always had to put my left boot on first. It seemed like the days that I didn't by chance, I never won a race. Always my left boot on first. And if I was in a slump, I had to change something up. So I would always wear my socks and underwear inside out. Inside out? Was there one particular race where this worked for, worked for you? Well, I actually worked a lot, and it would break me out of the slump, and then I can go back to normal. And I know I got you know some sideways looks in the jockey's room, but uh, anything to break out of a slump. Are you one of your horses is down here? Is that right? Yeah, we have one of one of the fillies that I have in my partnership is in the John Kimmel stable. Let's go check them out. Mig, your horse is either very very small or I'm missing <laughs> something. <laughs> now, she's just out for a little afternoon walk. These horses spend so much time in their stalls that they really need to get out and stretch their legs even in the afternoon. Who's this one next to us? Uh, this is a sweet little filly. She's a two-year-old um, by a horse that actually ran in all the Triple Crown races called Hard Spun. And he was second in the Kentucky Derby and second in the Preakness Stakes. But uh, she's just a baby and she's getting ready, but she's a sweetheart. Now, in terms of uh, people in the barn, I mean, we've seen a lot of people coming and going here today. On race day, are there any people that you want to avoid? There's always somebody that just seems like if they're around you, you can't win. And, and I've had a few, I'm not gonna embarrass anybody and bring up names, but there was one particular guy that he went out of his way to shake my hand every time he saw me, and every time he shook my hand, I never won. And one day I was on a filly that I didn't think could lose, and he shook my hand, and she ran the worst race of her life, and after that, he was done. I was never touching him again. Well, years ago in Saratoga, I rode for a trainer that wanted me to have a priest come to the barn and do an exorcism because he thought the barn had evil spirits in it because he could not win a race. And, and what, did, did, did it happen? Well, I did talk to the priest, yeah. but he, he refused to do he it. He wouldn't do it. Would not a, do so it. there are some lines that are, that, are, that are drawn. Yeah, absolutely. But he did hang garlic cloves over all the stalls. He really believed that there was something evil going on in his barn. What about color? Any superstitions about color of the horse? Well, not if they're one solid color like a gray, but if they have white markings on their legs, a lot of horsemen, well, it's basically an old wives' tale. If they have one white leg, it's okay. Two, you might try them. Three, you'd pass. But four, you don't want them. And, and I guess the superstition behind that is that they believe that maybe their bones were softer with the white legs or their hooves would be weaker because they'd be white. But that's a superstition. No science that you know of to back that up. No, I mean, the science to, to, to spell that would be Secretariat had three white legs and it didn't stop him any. Exactly. What about good omens? Well, good omens is just when you know your horse is warming up the, w the right way and he gallops over the gate with that energy that just tells you, you know what, it's going to be a good day. We might not win, but we're going to be competitive. And, you know, horses usually tell you what they're thinking. <coughs> was bless you. She sneezed on me. I guess this is a job hazard. What were you thinking? I have to go to a dinner tonight. Do you have any of your superstitions that you still carry into the races even though you're not riding? You know, it, it, it's interesting. I still put my shoes on left foot first. <laughs> 
So, all the time? All the time. I just, I, 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 for some reason that stuck in my head that I was lucky when I put my left foot on, my left shoe on first and my left boot on. I don't have to wear my underwear inside out anymore though. Here True that? I always wonder who Anderson. that voice is. This is Tom Durkin. He is a legendary race caller here at Belmont and everywhere. Right now, he's calling this race. We talked to him earlier to find out how he remembers it all. How does he do it? Let's take a look. And the rough. My advice for anybody that was calling a triple crown attempt, I would only give them one piece of advice. Don't drink coffee. And Lawless Miss is ready to roll. But you I just grew up in Chicago and uh, soon discovered that I probably wasn't going to be a jockey. And uh, <laughs> But uh, I had great admiration for the uh, track announcer there in Chicago when I was growing up. Phil George F. He was like my childhood idol and uh, I just wanted to be him. I'd go to the grandstand of the racetrack, call races into a tape recorder. Even my friends in the neighborhood, I'd have them run around and I'd, you know, I'd pretend they were horses and I'd call a horse race. In college, I'd get, stand up on the bar and everybody run around the bar and it became a thing. And, uh, and then eventually I got a job uh, calling uh, horse races at Little County Fairs in Wisconsin. One of the first things I do is handicap the races. So I've got my past performances here. I haven't made a chart out yet, but uh, these are the horses, let's say, in today's first race. So that's the way I approach the race and then start thinking of things to say that would be appropriate. Then I have to color in my program uh, the colors that the silks that the jockeys are wearing. I color that in my program and that helps me uh, to memorize the colors and the names. And also if they're on the far side of the track and I can only see, let's say in, in this race, there's a horse on the way on the outside. You can't, sometimes you just can't see all the colors, only a little glimpse of them. So I can look down at my program while I'm calling the race and see, oh, there's that little flash of blue out there. The only horse with blue out there is this horse, so that's, it helps that way. But I try not to look at the program during the race. It's good to be king and blazing Buddha, and then farther back, little wise guy. They're coming down to the finish, and it's ah, ah. I'm not too uh, introspective or retrospective for that matter. And uh, you know, I, I, I just go in every day with the attitude of, you're just gonna do your best race today. Uh, whatever you've done in the past uh, is uh, of no matter, really, because it's just, uh, you know, you're only as good as, uh, as your last race call. And it's Lawless Miss Ramon Dominguez with complete sang froid, rides that rail to victory in one by two lengths. Pegasus Diamond finishing second, followed by Carey Princess third, close for fourth. Wish I had a mint julep. Oh wait, that's a Kentucky Derby. All right, you guys have a little extra time this weekend. Check out some of our other videos on WSJ.com and our YouTube channel. We have an amazing inside look at the Belmont track here. It is one of the toughest in all of racing. Plus, Saturday may be the Belmont Stakes, but it is also the big fight between Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley. We have an exclusive interview with Pacquiao. You can check that out on WSJ.com and our YouTube channel. And finally, for those of you who want to get down and dirty at Belmont and do a little betting, maybe make a little moolah, here is the inside scoop from New York Racing Association handicapper Andy Serling. What is a handicapper? <laughs> What's, for those people who just don't even know, what do you do? Well, I, I, I look through the races and I try to figure out who's going to win them. I try to figure out who's going to win them and who's going to lose them. Let's just say I've never bet before. What's the first thing I do? Uh, the first thing you do, if you've never bet before, take a look at the horses. They come out in the track before the race for the post parade about right. eight to ten minutes before and take a look. Maybe you maybe you like the way one of them looks. It Good looks kind of ready and just have some fun. Now most people go into racing knowing like one or two horses names. Does that help you or hurt you to sort of know one or two horses names? In, in theory it's going to hurt you because there's a lot of other horses that can possibly win and considering 11 horses have won the first two legs of this Triple Crown and have failed to win the Belmont Stakes since a firm born in 1978, clearly if you just knew the name of that horse right. going to Belmont Stakes, you would have been in trouble. Now what about what they call post position? This is where the horses line up. Does that historically matter whether you're on the inside of the track or the outside of the track? It, it can and it can't. I wouldn't say it's a huge factor, but it can matter a little in Belmont, believe it or not, because sometimes the inside is a little bit deeper. So being on the outside is helpful and because you have this huge racetrack, a mile and a half, believe it or not, Belmont is mostly turns. 
this is the daily racing form and I print that out every day and the daily racing form is a paper which gives you the past performances of all the horses in the race. You want to take into as many fa account many as many factors as you can because your fans here. Well, they're 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 great friends of mine. They just won the race That's as a matter of fact. Happy. No yes, they, they listen are. to you. Very happy. You know, and I should listen to you more. Why don't we go inside? You help me place a bet. Absolutely. All right. Help us learn to read the screens up here. I mean, it's almost Greek to me. Now, this is a race up there that says it's Belmont Park, race number four. Walk us through it. Well, there's an enormous amount of information up there. Uh, you see MTP is minutes to post, so that's how many minutes until post time. Track condition, fast. The turf, that's the grass race, is firm. And then you go to the numbers on the left side. We have the horse's numbers, and right next to that, the number, a number that will change, are the odds. They're the current odds based on the money that is bet right now. All right, we're getting better, but now we need to go, we need to place a bet. We do. Andy, I'm looking at a very ominous looking thing <laughs> down here. IRS photo, if I stand here, do I get audited? Uh, it, well, probably not. If you, if, you, if you file correctly, you'll be fine, but believe it or not, this is a place that a horse player would like to stand because if you're standing there, it means you've won a lot of money and you've won so much money that you're actually, you have to sign for it. All right, race number four, this is where I'm gonna put my beer money. What do you think, have you looked at these horses, what have you picked? Well, I've, I've gone through, I've spent a lot of time, and the first thing you do is you, you, you handicap, as we've discussed. And I, I like the eight horse Speedy's Gal. Uh, Speedy's Gal has been running okay, but she's been running against much tougher horses than she's facing today. And so I think this sort of drop in class, we call it, is going to help her a lot and give her a chance to win. And she's a relative long shot. I think she's around seven to one right now. Let's go spend your money. All right. Moment of truth, I bought my $2 voucher, because that's how I roll. I live large, so help me do this. $2? Yep. Now, you got all your bets, win. And pick my horse. Yep. The eight. I'm I'll go right there. Go right the there. Eight. I'm trusting you here. So is it done or just accept, accept bet. it? And there's your ticket. Keep your ticket. The lucky right. ticket. They're in the gate. And the rock. She's in very good position. Now's the moment of truth. There she is, white blinker. She just wheeled outside. She's running pretty well. We have a good shot. Come on! No, she did not have enough. No. Well, number one. Number one. What, 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 I didn't like number right. one. I want two dollars. All right, that's it for our day at Belmont Park. I'm a little depressed because I didn't win earlier. I don't know. Andy says never bet on colors, but. I've always liked green. Two dollars. Let me give it a go. Wish me luck. <laughs>